The Dagama Neva 3D printer is an inexpensive delta machine that includes a filament sensor. What's a filament sensor and how does it work? I'm going to use this machine and I'm going to show you. I'm Joel, this is 3D Printing Nerd. This little machine next to me right here is the Dagama Neva and among its features is a filament sensor. A filament sensor's job is to detect whether filament is passing over it or through it and when filament is not detected, the machine goes into a pause state to hopefully let you remove any filament that's still there, insert new filament and continue printing. If you were about to print something on this machine and you didn't have a lot of filament left on the spool and you had to start the print and you had somewhere to go, with filament detection, you don't have to worry. This is Josh and he's setting up the RX100 Mark V to get a close up view of the filament detection in action. I'm going to apply these flush cutters to the filament and we should see it detect that the filament is no longer going through the extruder motor and spit it back out after it puts it into a pause state. Let's see what happens. We can see the filament being pulled in through the extruder and as it passes over the filament detection sensor, it should pause the machine and not continue printing because it detects no filament is available. That's really handy. The machine is now in a pause state and you can see by the blinking light, it needs attention. The way the Dagman Neva works is it uses a tap system. And if I double tap on the build plate, it will eject the filament left in the Bowden tube. There we go. The filament is out. I will set that aside. By that, I mean the ground behind me. And I can take my filament, assuming that this is a new roll, I can put it through. I'm going to clear any bits. I'm going to hit the button and the machine will resume printing right where it left off. Not only does filament detection allow you to save a print that otherwise would have failed, it allows you to do some pretty cool things. And that's kind of why I have this stack of spools right next to me. Here was my test. What I wanted to do is find a bunch of spools that had a varying amount of filament on them almost none. And the idea would be to feed it through this machine to make a print and then not pay attention so that I wasn't anticipating having to go and check the filament. And what I would do is, oh, that's right. I need to go check the machine. It's after work. It's late. It's in the morning. And sure enough, it would be paused and I would have to reinsert filament. Let me show you the models that came out from that test. Here are the models I was able to print with the Neva doing my tests. And you can see that I did have some failures. In fact, if you look at this, all four would be considered a failure, but I want to talk about this one last. I started out with this one and I started to insert different filaments, but I encountered a clog at the very end. After restarting, I got this, but when it got to the yellow, it started to um, not print very well. And you can see that the filament itself delams easy because there was spaces in the filament. This one, well, this one clogged as well. And that was really unfortunate. So I think what happened was uh, it was sitting too long warm. And I think I experienced a little bit of heat creep. And I think that is what caused some of the jams. So when the machine pauses, it still maintains heat but uh, I, I think I ran into some heat creep issues. As far as the rest of these, these are all varying types of PLA. And so it's completely understandable where some would work, where some would not, because not all PLA filaments are the same. Plus some of these have been in the open air on a shelf for more than a year. It's entirely possible that some weren't uh, as of high quality as they once were when they were brand new. But these ones aside, I want to talk about this one because I find it to be interesting and I want to get your opinion on what a fix might be. They print like this and it got through yellow just fine. This is my high five blue. This is some red PLA. This blue PLA though, it started skipping really badly and it was clicking as it was trying to push it through and it didn't seem like it was a clog. I might have been through a bad part of the PLA because it printed fine before. So I did notice this and I paused the print, I put in a different kind of PLA, 
and it finished it. So this cauldron is actually, well, it looks mostly okay, but you can tell from the blues, it is not. So in your opinion, what should I do to save this print? Do I mix super glue with baby powder and fill in the gaps? Or do I mix some two part epoxy and fill in the gaps? Or is there another method that you would use to save this print? I'm curious, let me know down in the comments. Unfortunately, with a Bowden system, you're left with sometimes a lot of wasted filament. The Bowden system usually has the filament sensor before the extruder gear, and that means the filament that exists within the Bowden tube then becomes a waste. On the Neva here, the Bowden tube runs the height of the machine and then back down again so it can reach the build plate. Because the sensor's right here, once the filament passes it, the extruder gear has to pull all that filament back out through the entire length of the Bowden tube. Unlike a direct drive system, such as the uh, upcoming Prusa i3 Mark III 3D printer, which has the filament detection sensor right above the extruder gear. And in that situation, you're not wasting nearly as much filament. In the end, regardless of the length of wasted filament, you're still saving your print and you're still adding to the user experience. And so I think it's incredibly valuable to have a filament detection sensor on a machine. And I think it really adds to the value of this low cost Delta printer. Let's call it good right there. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed and ring that bell to be notified of when cool new stuff is uploaded to the channel. A big thanks to everybody that supports me via Patreon, YouTube Red, and if you let the ads play. And don't forget members of the Patreon High Five Club get access to After the Five. Finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, let me know how to fix this and high five.